How you doing? It's Luke. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install large language models on your machine. Specifically, two uh, functionalities I'm going to show you. One, oops, there's a lot better. Apple for you. One is to turn it into a chat bot so we can chat here, just like it was a, a chat in ChatGPT. And also using an API so you can integrate it into your code. So let's first look at uh, DeepSeek. Well, DeepSeek is this new model that's out, DeepSeek R1 and DeepSeek V3. They're all the rage because apparently they're better than OpenAI's O1, but it's also open source. So OpenAI models, they're closed source. You can't just download them online. However, DeepSeek you can, and you also you can with Meta's Llama models. So anyway, how are we going to do this? Well, there's kind of two ways you could install or run uh, large language models on your machine. One is using Hogan Faces transformers, but that's a bit complex, which we might cover in a future video. But a simple way to do it is by using Olama, which, as they say, get up and running with large language models. Literally, all you do is download Olama, download it for Mac, and then you install it as an application. And once it's installed, that's you. You now literally just pass in which model you want to use. So, for example, the top one here in models on olama.com is DeepSeek R1. Whoops, let me zoom in there. And if we click on that, let's see, you can see almost 800,000 people have pulled it. Um, I cancel that because I already have it downloaded. Throw it one month on that. You can see that it has a bunch of different models. So 1.5 billion, 7 billion, 8, blah, blah, blah. Now, I would suggest, depending on the size of your computer, use a smaller one. The better up, the higher up you go, the better they are. But then, A, they're going to take ages to download. B, they're going to be much more computationally expensive. If you're just a normal laptop like me, you know, 1.5 billion, 7 billion, maybe 8. But we're just going to go with the 1.5. And so the way that we run this is literally with the command it gives here. Olama run, then the name of the model, and then we have colon if it's a specific version, so 1.5 billion version. So let's go to the code and I'll show you. So let me leave this and we'll clear this. So you've just started up your download of Olama. Now you want to run it. What do you do? Well, I have here an Olama model uh, script, which you could just run. For reference, if you're running scripts and you're not, too familiar with it. Script automates tasks, so it automates running Olama, essentially this one. Now, the way that you do it is once you've downloaded these files, this set up Olama model, you would shmod plus x, the name, name of the file, and then that will allow you to then run the file by dot forward slash setup, and then you'd run it. But if you want to do it just straight from terminal, the way that we do it here, is we would first want to download the model. So that's that um, Olama run, would run the model. First, we would want to pull the model. So Olama pull, and I already have it. So it's instant, but for you, it might take you know a couple of minutes or whatever. And then once that's pulled the model, you now have that model on your system to run. So you could do Olama run, and then the same, same one. Um, easier for me to just paste it. Go back to the middle. Oh yeah, I already had this run. <laughs> um, and then run, and then automatically starts running and you can send the message. So just say hi. And you can see it thinks. It's like, hi, how can I assist you today? And I'll say, I'm making a tutorial about running LLMs locally. Tell me a little about LLMs. So, there you go. And it's already started saying some stuff back. Now you'll notice here that it kind of comes in two chunks when you talk to this R3 model specifically. As it has this initial chunk where it's like, I'm thinking and thinking maybe that. Then the next chunk, which is actually the stuff like that it wants to give you back. So, for example, uh, a good example that I had done practicing for this is um, write me an article on the recent election of Trump. 
And so it will start thinking, it will start streaming out. So it's like, all right, so we need to write an article about Trump. First off, I know this. I think it would help, blah, blah, blah. Also, I guess it would be good here. I'm curious about this. But wait, what about that? And so you can see it starts to have this like human train of thought, which I think is possibly where it'll like sell and replicate in the human mind. But I think that's possibly a downside of people who are, you know, doing this kind of thing with AI is I don't really know if you want to replicate the human mind exactly because it's a bit kind of flawed in, in a lot of ways. So um, anyway, under that, you can then see it's like, right, I've finished thinking. Here's the actual results. So pretty cool, pretty good. Um, and then to leave this this chat, you just say forward slash buy, and that's you out. And the cool thing about this chat is obviously you can get confidential information. It's not over there on that. It's not stored anywhere. Your data is not used to retrain the model. It's just your model that you're running, which is cool. Now, if I have this model now, but I want to implement it into my program, say, for example, I have this tweet generating uh, AI program, which I created using AI in like 30 minutes. You can check it on the carded video here. But basically this chats to a hugging face API, which is a, basically a, ho a place which hosts models online, like large language models, etc., and data set stuff. So I wanted to run it locally instead. And so instead of using this hugging face API, I can use the Olama API. So this local host 11434 is not your large language model, it's Olama. Because then when you start trying to interact with the API, you have to pass in which model you want. So here, what we have is, this is me just getting some data and then I construct a prompt. So for the prompt for this tweet generation one, as a copywriter, generate this tweet about this. Do not respond to your thinking, only the tweet resulting tweet. The response has a hard limit of 280 charles. Um, now that's because it's a tweet. And you create this payload, which is the model, and then the prompt, and then streaming as false. You can set that to true, and it will stream, see the way in terminal where it com comes up like this. That would be streaming true. Streaming false waits till the whole thing's done, and then gives you it. So then you do this response equals request dot post. So it's a post request on HTTP, which is what requests is, so import requests, to that URL with that payload. So basically you pass that to the URL and then it'll give you something back and that will be the response. And it gives you a big response with a bunch of stuff in it. We only want the actual response, the generated text. We don't want all of the other stuff, date created, model, etc. So we have here, the, the, the model tiny llama. So I'll show you deep, um, deep seek in a minute. We'll use tiny llama first. Tiny llama is another model. Now, where do you get this model? Again, it was literally just on, on um, Olama. So on Olama, you can go to models, you can have a flick through, and you can see there's a bunch. For example, we have this uh, other one called llama as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, tiny llama. So the reason I'm thinking for Tiny Llama, as I'll show you in a minute, but basically it's small and it's fast and it does exactly what you need, which is always remember whenever you're running these LLMs, like do you really need, for instance, DeepSeek R1 to, to do a tweet generating app? Probably not, probably overkill. But anyway, so on the tweet generating app, I would just write like say Trump and then give me some casual tweet about Trump. Now it'll generate and there we go. Sometimes I think it's better to be a donkey than a horse. At least I can get away with anything. There you go. Um, but anyway, it'll just, and the cool thing is it, it keeps changing each time, whereas the previous model I had on Hugging Face, which was the free model, was rubbish. Whereas this now is a good model that's running. So let's try instead then using the DeepSeek one. So if we go here, we'll copy that model name. DeepSeek will get the 1.5 billion one. Let's paste that in here. Deep seek and control S. Make sure that's rerun. Exit. Where's it run? There we go. So the thing now, as you'll see, A, it's going to take ages. And B, will it listen to my instruction? Let's wait and see. So if we go back here, we can see that it's done the get request. It should be doing the post request, but it may not show me until it's completely done. 
Oh, there we go. That's pretty junky. Right, so there, that's what it's generated. It hasn't listened to the 280 Charles. And as you can see, it's shown me all of its thinking. But the good thing is because it's between this think and think, you could then just use some sort of split um, to to remove the text before this or the text only after it because it is in that kind of format. But it is a bit verbose. But it's cool because it shows you how it's thinking. Anyway, there you go. So that's how you can create your own or use your own uh, or use a large language model on your own machine, such as the new open source one, which is super cool. So anyway, if you have any comments, questions, queries, do let me know below. Until next time, I'll see you later. Take care.